Hi, thanks for joining us today to learn more about Plume. My name is Tyson Marion, and today I'm going to take you through a quick business overview of Plume, as well as its product offering. And then I'm going to hand it over to Adam Hotchkiss, who's going to take you through a quick spin of our consumer app and our back-end tools. I'm going to run through this relatively quickly, so I encourage you to email with any additional questions that you might have. We'll go over the quick facts. Plume was founded in 2014 by cable and telco industry executives. I like to say that in the early 90s, we were laying optical fiber. In the mid 90s, we were wrapping that fiber across the transatlantic and rubber. In the early 2000s, we were building optical amplifiers before we all sort of set off into management positions inside cable or telco companies to manage subscribers. Now that's not to brag about what we've done, but it is to suggest that we understand the problems that the cable and telco industry face. And we have built a company that specifically is focused on help solving those problems. We're headquartered in Palo Alto. It's where the majority of our, our corporate level folks sit, as well as our cloud and our data scientists. We have an additional significant presence in Europe. In Europe, we're focused on firmware integration and working on drivers inside uh, chipsets of Qualcomm, Broadcom, MediaTek, Quintana, and Intel. Uh, we pride ourselves in a lot of the technology we, we've developed. Today, we've, we've been granted over 30 patents, uh, and we're going to continue focusing our efforts on building out new technology for folks like yourselves. From a scale perspective, we've already deployed to 11 million homes and currently manage over 350 million Wi-Fi enabled devices. Our business model is relatively simple. We design hardware, uh, soup to nuts, and we license those designs to ODMs uh, and work with a major supplier uh, to ultimately you get you the best prices available. Plume itself is simply a software company. Uh, we're offering a platform as a service model. Our entire focus and, and why we really started this company is a very specific problem that we face today and that same problem we will continue to face for years to come, which is that the growth in devices and services uh, that are consumed on Wi-Fi enabled devices is increasing. Today, there are more devices and more frequency and volume of consumption of services on those devices than ever before. And if I say that 10, 15, or even 20 years from now, it will still be accurate. The problem that we're facing is that, that, that Wi-Fi is an indeterministic medium and ultimately, the systems that were put in place to manage Wi-Fi uh, and Wi-Fi consumption are outdated. <clears throat> There's limited network visibility, but from a consumer perspective, their expectations of what we deliver is only increasing. The consumers today believe that Wi-Fi is the internet. Our mission is to help you win on experience, not only with your customers, but with your techs, your techs in the field, and ultimately deliver on that promise to provide fast and reliable Wi-Fi to your customers. And this is about you. This is not about Plume. It's your brand, it's your customers, and it's your data. When we set out to help solve this Wi-Fi challenge, we thought to ourselves, we could easily create a hardware-centric solution, put a bunch of devices around a location, and ultimately say that we have mesh. But we knew that that was not going to withstand the test of time. Rather, what we've developed is a managed Wi-Fi services platform for the smart home. Now, that's a lot to take in, but let me point out uh, two key words in that sentence. First, it's managed. Plume provides a full shrink wrap solution so that you can get a new service to your customers instantaneously. Second, it's a platform. And for us to be considered a platform, we must have multiple applications running atop a base technology and also have the ability to allow third parties to contribute to that technology so that ultimately you're benefiting from not only what Plume can do, but what from third party developers can actually bring to the table. Why can we do this? It's because we are 100% a cloud-based software defined uh, platform. What that means is that our base technology runs applications in the cloud and delivers a better service for your customers. For instance, those applications may be related to what we call adaptive Wi-Fi to provide the best peak performance and throughput of Wi-Fi inside that home. Second would be cybersecurity as an application. Third might be parental controls, 
and forth. We have fourth, fifth, and, and beyond that, we have additional applications that are slated to uh, come to market here in the fourth and first quarters uh, of 19 and 2020, respectively. <clears throat> We've scaled to over 11 million homes. We manage more than 350 million Wi-Fi enabled devices. And our measurement of success is really the quality of experience, not only for those devices, but the services that are consumed on those devices. So when I say that we're a software defined network, what I really mean by that is that we have an ability, a unique ability to steer devices around a network to ensure that they're working the way that they were intended to work. For instance, if a device has five gigahertz capability, we're not gonna allow it or keep it on a 2.4 gigahertz band. If channel 147 on Wi-Fi is has significant interference, we're gonna go ahead and move that device to another channel that doesn't have significant interference. Also, if there are multiple access points in a home, we'll move it from one access point to the next. And it's not always the closest access point that has the best service. Our ability to manage and move devices around the network ultimately results in significantly increased throughput on that network and better quality of experiences. It also lends itself to very personalized experiences on a consumer's local area network in, inside their home. What this means for you is additional applications. Because we're not only a software defined network, but because we're 100% based in the cloud, turning up a new application or a new service happens instantaneously. There's no need to integrate additional firmware or software onto an, an agent onto a device. Rather, we're building these applications in the cloud that leverage data that's collected from that local area network. And then algorithms in the cloud are provisioning new rules to get pushed back down to a data plane on that device and ultimately result in new services for your customers. So in today's discussion, let me give you that quick overview of Plume Shrinkwrap solution and then hand it over to Adam to take you through a quick spin of the consumer app and the back end tools. We call it front to back. There are those things on the front end that your consumers will engage with. There's really three components. The first is an app. This app allows your customers to command and control their entire network, and it would be branded with your attribution, your logo here, and many other places throughout this app. Second are these cloud delivered services. I mentioned adaptive Wi-Fi security and parental controls. Oftentimes, these services are sold uh, as standalone offerings. Uh, to, we believe here at Plume that all these things work symbiotically and it makes sense to bundle these together so that you can provide a value proposition to your customers to create new revenue generating units for yourself. Finally are the pods. <clears throat> the pods are designed soup to nuts by Plume. They autom automatically detect whether they should go into router mode or whether they should go into bridge mode. And we have uh, pods that ultimately get up to speeds of one gig. You'll probably notice in the picture there that there are two gig ports on the bottom of these, of these devices. Uh, each of our SKUs of hardware come with gig ports on the bottom. This lends itself to different types of engagement models, whether you're plugging into an ONT or you're plugging into an existing gateway, uh, <clears throat> ultimately, or whether you're integrated into an existing uh, piece of third-party hardware, we have a sol an engagement solution for you. Next are the backend tools. These are the things that you as a service provider will engage with. And there's really three components. There are the operational tools and APIs, dashboards, and training. On the operational tools, let me orient you to what you see on this slide. On the bottom left is a tier one customer support tool. This is the most robust tool on the market. It's the most robust tool because it's actually providing data about what's happening inside that consumer's home <clears throat> on a minute by minute basis. It also provides and guides the customer service rep through ways to troubleshoot that customer's network and proactively does it. So in the event that <clears throat> we're doing proactive notification, there's a good chance that you won't even get calls, but your customer service reps can go into a network and ultimately determine what needs to be fixed there and help fix it. On the top right, what you see there is a tier two and tier three uh, customer support tool we call the Plume Knock. This device is usually worked on by teams of product and engineering folks. This is an extremely robust tool that provides you more data and more support uh, from a remote perspective than the tier one tool 
called Plume Central provides. Uh, and finally, on the bottom right, this is what we call our, our Plume dashboards. While the Plume Central and Plume Knock were providing a visibility and a look into a specific customer's home, our dashboards take an aggregate level view across your entire network to provide you information such as where are cybersecurity threats coming from, where do I have coverage alarms, and ultimately, uh, what are my subscriber and forecast numbers look like? Finally, is training. Plume likes to work with our customers. We like to not only provide you with all these services, but training on these services on how to best uh, how to best use these tools and ultimately how to get the most out of them. So we get, we're going to work with you face to face, as well as provide e online resources for continued education to ensure you're getting the most out of your Plume service. So why do customers work with us? The numbers that you see on the screen here are actual numbers. Uh, this is not belief, this is fact. If you really think about it, we impact two sides of the ledger. On the revenue side of the ledger, we help increase monthly revenue per user. Uh, we do this on average somewhere between $10 and $15 per user per month. On the expense side of the ledger, we've kind of found this, this interesting number, we call it uh, the number of 72. And that's that 72%, give or take a point here or there, of a customer, uh, an ISP's broadband base calls in every year with some internet or Wi-Fi related issue. With Plume sitting inside those homes, we've been able to reduce call-in rates on these internet and Wi-Fi related issues by 50%. Of those calls that come in, approximately 19% turn into truck rolls. We've been able to uh, ground two thirds of those truck rolls. If you think about the cost of these things, we typically somewhere in the average range of calls of at about $10 and truck rolls at about $100. These numbers add up. With Plume inside those homes, those reductions add up and ultimately help with operational efficiencies. And the customers love it. When Plume is inside a home, uh, NPS scores are somewhere in the range of 60 points. And we've tracked cohort by cohort across our entire base. And what we found is that when Plume is inside a home, Customers are 30% less likely to churn. So again, taking this holistically and thinking about the value proposition for you and your customer base, it includes re new revenue generating opportunities on the front end, and ultimately on the back end, uh, better efficiency, happier customers, and reduced churn. So just to take this and ultimately put this wrapper around it, we call it the shrink wrap program. First, we're providing service in a box. It's a turnkey solution and we can get folks launched in as few as 45 days. We, have, we provide all the operational tools, everything that you saw. So the tier one customer portal, the tier two, tier three support portals, the network dashboards, uh, any necessary API integration into existing operational and billing support systems the app on the front end, branded with your logo, uh, also continuous upgrades. So all new features that Plume develops and the new service uh, updates that Plume uh, pushes ultimately come with the service. Finally, a marketing toolkit. Plume has been in the market. We've spent a lot of time. We've got a lot of scars to show. We have found very interesting ways and ultimately very successful ways of marketing to customers. So what we've done is we've made all of those marketing assets available to you as the ISP. This is brandable content. This is Plume's know-how and already sort of battle-tested ways of reaching your customers to help you proactively grow your service. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop. As I mentioned, I encourage you to, to send emails with any additional questions. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Adam Hotchkiss is going to take you through that consumer app and those back-end tools. Thanks. Hi, my name is Adam. I'm going to walk you through the features of the Plume app, which is used to not only set up the Plume system at home, but also used to control and monitor the system after the setup is complete. This is the screen that the user will see after the installation process. You see on the top left corner, I can click on the network view to see the topology of the home, and I here have set up in my house the living room gateway, which is denoted by the globe, and I have two extenders. One is a hallway super pod, and one is a SmartThings Wi-Fi hub, which also has IoT radios for the ZigBee and Z-Wave devices that I have in my home. 
So if I click on the SmartThings Wi-Fi Hub, it's going to show me the connection quality. I have an excellent connection back to the living room, which means I have not only a good signal strength, but also a fast uh, performance in terms of speed back to my gateway connection. I can even link my Samsung account if I'd like to be able to control my IoT, IoT devices from my SmartThings Wi-Fi uh, app that I have also on my phone from Samsung. And I can see the devices that are connected. I have one Epson printer, which is in the very corner of my house, which for the last three days has been online and connected to this hub. So I'll go back to the home screen. And now we want to be able to check the performance of the broadband connection that's coming into the home. I can do that by clicking on the pulsing gateway in the middle of the screen with the globe. That's going to bring up for the last 30 days the speed that's been reported from the internet to my gateway. You can see I have very consistent speed of about 70 megabits per second. On the reliability side, you see I have two gaps. The last two weeks ago, I had one day gap, and about uh, two days ago, I also had a gap where my internet was down. And that's because I was doing testing at my house, but if my internet really was down, I would see those gaps there, and that allows me to test not only the speed, the consistency, but also the reliability of the connection my, my internet provider is providing to me. Down below, you see the check speed now button. I can click that to run a speed test in real time. So I can tell how the speed is doing in about 30 seconds that it'll complete, and I'll be able to see the speed I'm getting right now if I have some doubts about my performance. Beneath that, I can see the top five devices in terms of data consumption on my network. And you see for the last 30 days, about 800 gigabytes consumed, 40% from my Apple TV, 20% from my work MacBook, and about 20% also from my son's Motorola Moto E5 phone. So it's a lot of data consumption, and this allows me to see the heavy hitters and the broadband connection. Now, not only the broadband connection speed, but also the device speed I may want to check. So here I can click in on my phone, and then I can test the, the internet speed directly to my phone. So you can see the last speed test down below was about 70 megabits per second. Now I can see the connection I'm getting to my phone is about the same speed, and I'm very happy that I'm getting line rate speed to my phone. So that's a way to check not only the internet connection coming in, but also the speed to your phone itself. If you're having doubts about what kind of speed you're getting in different areas of the house, you can walk around and run this test over and over again. Next is related to security and control. So the people in your house, what are they able to access? All the devices they have secure. And in order to do that, I'm gonna click down at the very, very bottom, which says people at home. And you see the little bubble two, denoting there's two people at home. And I can see the profiles in my house and the devices that I have assigned. Um, for myself, I have my iPhone, my iPad, and my uh, MacBook assigned to myself. And I can click in to see those devices at any time within the, within the app. Uh, beneath that, I have my wife, and she's been home since 8.47 p.m., you see, and I have my son, Eric. He's been home since 5.30, and it shows their perspective devices there. If I want to have a conversation with my son, maybe it's time for dinner, I can simply click on the timeout button, that's going to uh, put in timeout the, the phones for 15 minutes and uh, the work MacBook. If I click again, that's going to put in timeout the other devices there, there as well. I click again, it's going to take them out of timeout and make them available on the network. So this is a way that you can, you can check to see, um, uh, get, your, get your, uh, your, your phone or your daughter, I'm sorry, your son or your daughter's devices uh, frozen, get them into dinner or have a conversation with them, and then unfreeze it when you're done. So if I click in here in my profile, you'll see I have an avatar of my picture, the devices assigned to me, and the different level of security. So I have online protection turned on. That's going to protect me against malware, and botnets, phishing websites, et cetera, on the network, which is very uh, important. I'm going to go ahead and leave that on. I can also set up content access, and you can set up different levels depending on the age group. So you can have teenager friendly or kid appropriate for children, or no adult content if you just want to block the, um, the uh, adult content such as pornography from the network. Kid appropriate and teenager appropriate will block extreme view websites, for example, or things about drugs or violence that you don't want your kids to see. And this is both for websites or for mobile apps or apps that they're running on their computers um, that you don't want them to have access to. So next, I can also turn off uh, ads. I have ad blocking turn on for myself, and that's going to block those kind of annoying ads on the websites that I go to that I, I want to view content and not ads. I can enable that for all my devices. So all this control is nothing without visibility. So if I click on manage security events, this is going to show me for the last 30 days the type of events that have happened in my network. And I have uh, security threats, which are shown as red, content threats or content filters, which are shown in green, and ad blocking events, which are shown in blue. 
So let's say I just want to see online protection events. I can click there, and I can kind of zoom in to any particular day. So if I just want to see what happened yesterday, I had 15 events. I can click there, and this is going to show me websites or apps that were blocked for malware reasons, and also for external IP addresses that tried to attack devices inside of my house that were blocked. So this is an intrusion detection and prevention system that we also set up through the Plume app. And it shows you not only the IP address that was used to try to attack your network, but where it's located and why it was blocked. I can also set up individual blacklists if I don't want to have access to Netflix or YouTube for this person or their devices. I can simply enter in the URLs that I want to block, and then those are applied to the, the, the person's devices. So lastly, I'll go back here to the home screen, click on the menu item on the bottom left, and this is going to show me uh, guest access to my house. So you have guests that come over. You want to be able to restrict not only the devices they can see, but also the time of day that they can actually see them. So I had set up a password for my friend Eric, who's going to come over. And Eric has his own personalized password. And because I have a personalized password, I can decide, de decide for Eric which devices Eric can see, which is the Epson printer, the Sonos Play 1, and uh, other Sonos speakers. So he can play music. He can print out his uh, boarding pass for his flight. But he can't access my printer. He can't access my, um, I'm sorry, he can't access my webcam. He can't access my, my NAS that I have set up in my house that may have personal information in it. I can also enable or disable it at any time. So if I disable this, this Wi-Fi password, that means it becomes completely unusable for them. And then when they come home, I can go ahead and enable it. I can also set a time of day that I want to expire. So if he's staying for the weekend, I'll set up for Sunday at midnight for that password to be disabled. And then I don't have to worry about him uh, having access to my network after he leaves. So thanks for walking through the main features of the, the Plume app with me. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and look at some of the backend tools next, which is used to, to monitor the network from the ISP view and, and not the consumer view. We're going to take a look at Plume's backend tools, which is what the service provider will see. And we're going to start with our tier one tool called Plume Central which is designed for customer service representatives to quickly find problems with customers' networks when they call and provide resolution. So this is the health check of this customer's network that I pulled up. And we check for generalized um, connectivity for the network, that the network is stable, there's no reboots happening, and we check the airtime available to make sure it's OK. Um, and you see down below that I have also network performance requirements, which are related to speed and coverage and, uh, and quality of experience for the different devices. You can uh, immediately tell that I have two red tiles. One is Wi-Fi coverage, and if I click there, we provide uh, detailed troubleshooting steps for every type of tile and every alarm that we have. So you see here, for the six of the last seven days, I have an alarm active, and I give some tips for how to solve the problem. This customer only has one gateway. They really don't have enough coverage throughout their entire house. So really, the, the, the remediation for this is to, to go and install some more extenders, and we can go ahead and order some extenders for this customer, and ship them out some super pods, install them with the mobile app, and that'll really solve their coverage issue within the house and, and solve, the, solve the issues that they're seeing. Um, but I do have quality of experience issues with, with some devices or pods here. And really, this is a quality of experience is something unique to Plume. So we measure for every single device in the network um, the level of uh, bandwidth and, and the type of device and the application that's running on it to be able to say what the, the quality of experience the user is, is, is having at that very instant in time. And this is uh, updated in real time throughout the, every device on the network. And this is something unique to Plume. And, and you can uh, go through all the different type of devices in the customer's house, and you'll see like there's some devices which may be like a Wi-Fi light bulb. And the light bulb just barely needs any, any bandwidth and connectivity to be able to turn on and off. And on the other extreme, you may have a, a laptop like a MacBook that can run uh, you know, high, high quality streaming or real-time application that needs tens of megabits of, of uh, bandwidth in order to run appropriately. So I can click on the QoE tab just to kind of go in and to see exactly what the problem is. And I can view um, in live mode, which is what I'm in right now, and, and show the device. And I can see that this game room computer is really struggling. It has a, a very low QoE score of 1.3. 
And any score between one and two is very low. A score of five, for example, for this Office MacBook is very high. A score of five has a very excellent quality of experience. And I can see the reason why, you know, if I only have three megabits per second, I may have a really poor quality of experience on this MacBook. And I have high congestion and low RSSI that's contributing to it. And we give this recommendation engine here that would say you really need to put in some more access points to get this gamer computer connected on five gigahertz and get the quality of service that it needs. And if I want to go back and look at time, I can see here over the last 10 minutes of how it's been performing and the RSSI is, is fairly low. Um, the airtime available is uh, not very good. It's about 80% utilized. So I have about 20% of the airtime. And that coupled with low RSSI is, is really going to block um, a lot of uh, uh, performance that I want out of this device. Um, so that's kind of the real-time uh, effect you get from using Film Central. And I can go back, for example, over the last day and see that this gamer computer is typically in a very low QoE score. Sometimes it kind of dips above 2, which is kind of in a warning area. But for the most part, it's red. And, and the other device as I have connected to Wi-Fi I have, have green status, so they're very well connected. And this will provide to you for every single device in. And you can run other things like uh, speed tests on the network. So if you want to see the histogram of speeds over the last 30 days, we show it. You can run a real-time speed test. And, and this tells you that the speed going to the, to the, not just to the gateway, but also the extenders is, is good. Um, I can always view the topology. This network just has a gateway and a few devices, and I can see that this is a, uh, this gamer computer is an alarm that we just looked at. And anytime I want to view the devices, I can see in real time here and see which ones have alarms or not. And finally, as a technician, I may want to go to the customer's house and install an extender if they, if they call me out to, to roll a truck. Um, so I can just uh, type in the serial number of the extender and add it to the customer's network, uh, run a speed test, and, and validate that the quality of service is good before I, I leave the customer's home. So this allows me to set up every aspect of the customer's account. Next, if you want to dive in deeper, we go to the Plume NOC. And, and Plume NOC is really going to give you access to every single provisioning uh, parameter available to the network. So we quickly look. You can see that the level of detail on this network. So um, I have a, a gateway here. I have a couple of extenders. And I have many devices connected. Everything is colored green because it has an excellent quality of service connection. And I can view the channels that are used to be connected, channel 157, channel 11, channel 44, et cetera. And I can see even the type of devices with smart icons here. So I can tell the Sonos Play 5 versus Sonos Play 1, for example. Um, and you see uh, in the middle pane here are all my provisioning options. So I can do things such as uh, you know, set the minimum mode if I want to turn off 11B or 11G to do some testing. I can turn off all these different um, advanced provisioning options if I'm doing some advanced troubleshooting. And this is all available within the, the Plume NOC that you can see uh, as the ISP and we can see here at Plume to help troubleshoot together. Um, if I wanted to, to look a little bit deeper on one device, I can kind of click in here to the uh, iPad. And this is going to tell me not only that it's an, an iPad, but I can see also the details that this is a, a, an Apple iPad, iPad Pro 12.9 inch model. So I can even tell the model number. I can tell the OS version that it's running 12.3.1. And this is called advanced device typing. We do this for every major device within the network. Um, and if I kind of scroll down, I can view some advanced stats, such as uh, how the steering is working. Um, are we steering it correctly? And I can, uh, I can go in and see some advanced graphs, not just of, uh, of coverage, but also bandwidth usage, um, steering events, and the uh, QoE scores that we kind of looked at before. I can view on a per minute basis, things like channel utilization and packet retry rate. Um, this is the uh, interference that it's seeing, which is uh, very low for this network, below 10%. And uh, phi rate when it is sending data, so I can see the, um, the packet error rate and phi rate and throughput is all shown for me on a permanent basis for this network. Um, I can also run the same speed test here. So these are all the speed tests for all the different nodes in the network. I can kick off a live speed test here. Um, but the cloud is going to run periodic speed tests and show me this information. So I can see I'm getting line rate speeds of 70 megabits per second on every node. So I'm quite happy with that. And I can go into account or location settings um, to see um, uh, the different activations I have or update the firmware. I can see here I can uh, control the firmware level I have if I'm doing some advanced troubleshooting or testing. So this is really meant to, to, to dive in deep to the individual accounts and, and do some troubleshooting or testing of features into the network. So you also want to be able to see at the network level what's going on. So we have dashboards related to that. And, and this is a view of uh, some of the Plume dashboards. So I can see the kind of security threats that I'm blocking on the network. And let me go back here for, for one week here and show you 
Um, I've blocked a total of about 1.3 million security events on this network, and I can see what type of events they are. If I have, you know, almost half, over half a million malware events, um, about uh, 600,000 spyware and adware events, and I can even go through to see how many botnet attacks I've um, I've stopped on the network, almost 650 botnets. So that's uh, pretty impressive. If I wanted to dive in here to see what the threats are, I can go in here to see the top level of threat. And for this network, uh, right over the last week, most of the threats are coming in from crypto miners that are trying to take over browsers for my customers. And I have about 130,000 of those locked throughout this, uh, this, uh, this uh, week. Um, I can also go in and, and see how many customers I have online. I have about 30,000 customers online. And I have almost 600,000 um, devices, active devices, so I'm quite happy about that. And I can see you know, how many nodes my customers are installing. So most of my customers install two uh, super pods or two nodes within the network. And, um, and on the tailing end here, I have some customers that have four or five or six, all the way up to 20 plus nodes for some of the, the really aggressive customers who may have multiple buildings or apartment complexes that use my solution. And I can also go into some analytics. I can see the type of devices that are being installed. And this is kind of a, a brand look by category. So let me just pick on set-top boxes. So this category here is set-top boxes. And you can see that I have a, a pretty even category here from Amazon and Apple, Apple TVs and Roku set-top boxes. And then uh, trailing here in position number four is uh, TiVo and number five is uh, Google. And then I have really a, a spattering of, of lower ones. Um, these are probably like uh, off-brand set-top boxes. There's a Dish set-top boxes. There's Marantz, which is kind of an off-brand, and Comcast set-top boxes that are connecting to my network. So this is kind of a, a view of what I have here, not only for set-top boxes, but Wi-Fi speakers, wearables, uh, tablets, uh, computers. So you can really see what kind of brands your customers are buying. Um, and you can uh, change your advertising or change your retail partnerships to kind of um, uh, meet those brands. So just knowing what customers are buying really help you connect with them. Um, so that's an example of uh, dashboards, but putting all three pieces together, uh, these are items that you can really get to know not only individual customers, but your entire network of how, it, how it's performing or what people are buying. And this is important as you go along that we'll continuously update these dashboards and update these tools for you to make sure that your customers have the best experience possible.